What's up, what's up guys? We are today going to get into the number four principle of the Kabbalion, <laughs> the Hermetic Principles, the principle of polarity. Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. Like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. The Kabbalion. First of all, welcome back to another video. I'm Anne Blackwood, your Silicon Valley Sage Sister, here to bring consciousness to the forefront of your daily life to make life a little kinder and simpler. Let's get into this. But first as well, I'm going to say, you know, I've done videos on what this is going to get into before uh, on many different things, including energy, including politics. But before we lose the light, and I can't film out here anymore, let's get into the paragraph and then we'll talk about it. This principle embodies the truth that everything is dual. Everything has two poles. Everything has its pair of opposites, all of which were old hermetic axioms. It explains the old paradoxes that have perplexed so many, which have been stated as follows. Thesis and antithesis are identical in nature, but different in degrees. Opposites are the same, differing only in degree. The pairs of opposites may be reconciled. Extremes meet, everything is and isn't at the same time. All truths are but half truths. Every truth is half false. There are two sides to everything, etc., etc., etc. It explains that in everything there are two poles or opposite aspects and that opposites are really only two extremes of the same thing with many varying degrees between them. To illustrate, heat and cold, although opposites, are really the same thing. The differences consisting merely of degrees of the same thing. Look at your thermometer and see if you can discover where heat terminates and cold begins. There is no such thing as absolute heat or absolute cold. The two terms, heat and cold, simply indicate varying degrees of the same thing, and that same thing, which manifests as heat and cold, is merely a form, variety, and rate of vibration. So, heat and cold are simply two poles of which we can call heat, and the phenomena thereupon are manifestations of the principle of polarity. The same principle manifests in the case of light and dark, which are the same thing. The difference consisting of varying degrees between the two poles of the phenomena. Where does darkness leave off and light begin? What is the difference between large and small, hard and soft, black and white, sharp and dull, noise and quiet? high and low, positive and negative. The principle of polarity explains these paradoxes and no other principle can supersede it. The same principle operates on the mental plane. Let us take a radical and extreme example, that of love and hate, two mental states apparently totally different. And yet there are degrees of hate and degrees of love and a middle point in which we use terms like or dislike, which shade into each other so gradually that <clears throat> sometimes we are at a loss to know whether or not we like or dislike or neither. And all are simply degrees of the same thing. As you will see, if you will but think a moment, and more than this, and considered of more importance to the hermetists, it is possible to change the vibration <clears throat> of hate to the vibrations of love in one's own mind and in the minds of others. Many of you who read these lines may have had personal experiences of the involuntary rapid transition from love to hate and the reverse in your own case and that of others. And you will therefore realize the possibility of this being accomplished by the use of will by means of 
the hermetic formulas. Good and evil are but the poles of the same thing. And the hermetist understands the art of transmuting evil into good by means of an application of the principle of polarity. In short, the art of polarization becomes a phase of mental alchemy known and practiced by the ancient and modern hermetic masters. An understanding of the principle will enable one to change his own polarity as well as that of others if he will devote the time and study necessary to master the art. Now, like I said, I've discussed, I've, I've got a whole video on how the, the gosh, the, <laughs> I've got a very aggressive um, hummingbird. Bro, the flowers are all yours. Jeez. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's like the second closest he's ever gotten to me. He's really aggressive over these flowers. I don't even have any flowers around me that he can get to. Anyway, <laughs> where were we? First rats. Now hummingbirds. I can't sit out here in peace. For those of you who have been following my channel for long enough, you'll know what I mean. Anyway. <laughs> so I did a whole video on energy and how there is no good or evil energy. That is why I differentiate between good and bad when I'm talking about emotions and don't use positive and negative and use positive and negative when I'm talking about energy because I'm talking about the polarity of energy but not about good and bad. I really do my best to not mix those two because when it comes down to it, this guy is tripping me out. I'm like kind of waiting to get attacked. It's humming, Jesus. Bro, you're not gonna chase me out of my own home, dude. watching me. It's literally sitting directly above me, like on this tree. I'm scared to sit down. Let's see if I can. He's, he, he's chilling up there. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of afraid to sit down. This video is getting longer. Oh, there he is. Um, this video is getting longer by the minute because I'm afraid of the hummingbird. <laughs> He's getting aggressive. If any of you guys have seen my, uh, in or following me on Instagram, I've been talking about this for like the last several days or for like the last week. He's getting more and more aggressive. Blows my mind. Usually he chases the other hum hummingbirds out of here, but the fact that he's trying to come at me, that's very unusual. Um, anyway, good and bad energy. So I've done videos about how there is no good or bad energy. There's positive and negative energy when it comes to the way it works scientifically, but there's no good or bad energy. I could be facing someone who, uh, God, now the cat, star, you don't live here. You could, I could be faced with someone who is, is sending me negative energy, but I don't have to take that negative energy on. I can even transmute it into positive energy. This is what I do when someone insults me and I laugh and not out of nervousness, but out of a true appreciation for the moment, even if the other person finds it inappropriate for me to appreciate it. Another great example of a polarity is self-love versus needing other people. Now, I would say that we, we, don't, we, we shouldn't get our validation from others. We need to get our validation from ourselves. We need that self-love, we need that self-confidence 
but we do still need other people in our lives. I would never recommend someone completely hermit off, completely, completely isolate because we need hummingbirds over there. I'm waiting to see if he's gonna come back. <laughs> oh, now the hummingbird's chasing another bird. <sighs> it's a dove. Poor thing. Jesus. Dude. I don't even understand. Like, all the flowers are around me. He can get to them. I'm not blocking him from anything. This is hilarious. Anyway. I would never recommend someone isolate. <laughs> either. But. We don't want to get our validation. From outside of ourselves. So this is a great example. Of how we want to be able to thrive and survive on our own. But we also need companionship. There are all sorts of things, all sorts of things when it comes to these polarities. I, like I said, I've done other, other videos on spirit, what, what people think are spiritual contradictions when they're not. And when we can learn to sit neatly in the middle, you know, like even politically, I don't fit on either side because I agree with things on both sides and I disagree with things on both sides. And when you get to the extremes of either end, you get to something that's not good. We don't want to be extremely on one side or the other. With most things in life, we want to be neatly in the middle as best we can. And so I want everybody to walk away from this video just contemplating where do you find yourself responding to extremes? Where do you find yourself leaning to one extreme or another? And how could you get yourself to a place where you can at a minimum start off with conceding to the fact that there might be something that could get you to the middle. An example of this, another example of this would be how at this point, like I've talked about as well recently, you know, I would consider myself a witch. I don't, I, have an attachment to being a witch. It's not attached to my identity, but if I was going to explain to somebody simply, I, I would call myself a witch as far as the things that I do. And yet I have no qualms with Christianity. Um, in that sense. I know a lot of people who consider themselves pagan, who have very strong aversions to Christianity. And I used to be one of them. So I understand it. I understand. Uh, even when I was first starting to teach meditation and manifestation, I would have such a hard time using the word prayer that I would use the word meditation instead of the word prayer. Now I use the word prayer, I use God. I talk about God, source, spirit, cosmic consciousness. I even mentioned in a video not too long ago about how I put God first because I didn't like putting God in there at all. And now I say God, source, spirit, cosmic consciousness. And if I try to say it in any other order, that sounds weird to me. So, I can still consider myself a witch and have, or, or pagan event of some kind. Although at this point I would literally just call myself spiritual really. Um, although I do still observe some of my 
pagan heritage when it comes to certain things um, in ritual. But I, I don't have to, because I consider myself a witch, then be against Christianity or prayer or the idea of God. So I want to invite you to, to just ask yourself, when, when do I have extreme reactions to things? I saw a bird on the <laughs> line over there. It's, it's not the, it's too big to be that many bird. Um, but I want to invite you to, <laughs> to ask yourself, where am I viewing things as extreme? Where am I having extreme reactions to things? And what could I do to bring myself to a more neutral place with them? At a minimum, you don't have to learn to love them right away. You're not gonna feel like you could learn to love them right away necessarily. Um, which the last thing I wanna get into is readiness. But just start, start introducing yourself to the idea introducing yourself that that I, the way I pronounce that was kind of weird um, <laughs> start introducing yourself to the idea of being able to at a minimum be in some sort of neutral place with with whatever it is that's bringing you to an extreme place of any kind Especially because there are times when we can feel like we love something extremely. And because we've put it on a pedestal, that can be dangerous too. You know, people think I'm cold when I say this, but I tell people about how my significant other, you know, I could live without him. I don't want to live without him. I never want to live without him, but I could. I know I could. It would be very, very painful in the beginning. But I know that I would not die if he died tomorrow. I would be very, very sad. And just by being able to come to that place. It's like I said, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to lose him. But I know if for some reason I did, I would be okay. And I love him a lot, 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 a lot. I don't, I don't even know if I could begin to explain it. But I also know that I would be okay. And often when we allow ourselves to even get into these extreme ends of love, that's when we can end up, or what we think is love, which is really often I find not actual love. Um, it might be being in love rather than love because being in love and loving someone are two different things. So how can you start getting comfortable with moving yourself to the middle from the extreme ends of the things that you have put yourself. Now they're screaming kids. I don't even know if you guys can hear that, but where can you find yourself? Every time I, I, I start to get into this, <laughs> where, where can you start to nudge yourself towards the middle from the extreme ends of the things you are at the ends of? And lastly, I want to talk about the importance of readiness. Because we can end up finding ourselves very disappointed because we will start something when we're not ready. This is something that I, I talk about when it comes to addiction. You will not be able to get someone who's addicted to something, unaddicted to it, if they're not ready to quit. They will end up lying to you. They will end up sneaking around. That's a great example. But the cool thing is, is when you're really ready, when you're really ready, 
it's let's let me put it this way i today on instagram had a video of gratitude a gratitude video for my clients so i had just gotten back from seeing a client and i was talking about how much i appreciated having clients that are ready because i've had a couple who weren't and eventually i had to let them go because they weren't doing the work and it was a waste it was a waste of of both of our time really so having clients having had clients that weren't ready gives me the perspective of having so much gratitude for those who are because they enjoy doing the work just as much as I enjoy doing the work with them and bringing them the tools. They enjoy the healing. They enjoy the proactive health tools that we get to after they've done some healing. When you're ready, things just get a little less daunting things just get a little easier. And that's why I love, love working with clients who are ready. I am so, so privileged to work with clients who are ready to do it. I just heard something behind me. I don't know what it was. First the rats, now hummingbirds. I just can't sit out in here in peace, man. But we can get ourselves ready. We can get ourselves ready. We can psych ourselves up. And we do that one step at a time. One step at a time. And sometimes that first step might feel like a big cannonball <laughs> into the pool, into the deep end even. But it is just the first step. And once you've made it, every step after that, becomes so much easier. So if you're ready to take that, that step, I would love to take it with you. And I do have six spots open and available for one-on-one -on -one clients right now. Links for that are in the descrip description. I will get into that in a moment. But yeah, thank you guys for joining me for another video. Stay tuned because, well, I don't know what video I'll do next because sometimes I do videos in between that I'm inspired to do. But that said, the next Hermetic Principle video will be the principle of rhythm. Everything flows out and in. Everything has its tide. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. So stay tuned for that. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. I'm so close to having that 100 subscribers and then I can stop talking about it so that I can get my custom URL and stop talking about it. Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you're enjoying my videos here. I know you will enjoy my Patreon where I get even deeper into the spiritual and the practical healing and health tools that I have available over there. I also have spots available for one-on-one. -on -one. I have four different session packages to choose from. So if you're ready, you can just sign up or if you have any questions, <clears throat> whoa, if you have any questions, you can email me or sign up for my free clarity call. Bunch of other links in the description. I'm losing the light, so I'm gonna head in and edit this crazy video. <laughs> May the energies you serve serve you well. And let's keep making our way through.